Good morning. I just finished um, taking part in the Creative Freelancers Conference the last couple days. Got a chance to talk a couple times. I see a few familiar faces from that event. This talk's going to be different. Uh, yesterday and the day before, um, I would say it was more of the, I don't want to say the fun part versus the not fun part of design, but yesterday we were talking about like playing with watercolors in your off time, going on art dates, using your camera in creative ways. So uh, today I get to switch gears and talk some real nuts and bolts material. Um, hey, Mr. Soundman. Do you have the switch for that or should I pull the plug? Sorry. I'll just keep doing my thing. Thank you. I'm not sure what I was looking at there. So anyway, um, logos. Like, we're designers. I think, you know, okay, designers don't do logos all the time, but it's kind of like uh, maybe pies are to a baker. I live in a small town, and if you're like the man or the woman who's known as the great baker in the town, you get invited to Thanksgiving and are asked to bring a pecan pie, people are just going to expect that pie to be really good because you're the town baker. Logos are kind of like that for designers. We don't do them every day, but when we do them, it's kind of expected that they're going to be good. And you know, if you're at a party and someone says, what do you do? Well, I'm a graphic designer. They, the usual first thing is, do you, so does that mean like logos or, or web or logos and print or whatever? And yeah, that's what we do. And a lot of us really enjoy logos, and a lot of us are a little fearful of them. Wow, my neighbors are a little noisy. Um, but um, anyway, no matter where you are with your logo design capabilities and what you think of them, sit tight, because I'm going to throw a whole bunch of stuff at you. My goal here is to just really broaden your idea of what a logo can be, and specifically in a way that Here's, here's the ideal takeaway from this thing, that you'll watch all the pictures I'm going to put up, maybe listen to about half of the words I say, and at the end of things, um, you'll remember the next time you're working on a logo that the breadth of things that we are about to cover are pretty much the scale of things you ought to cover every single time you work on any sort of logo. And I'll talk about that throughout this thing. So let's get going. Now, th this was mentioned, the Logo Brainstorm book. I worked on this for the last, um, well, this was, came out about a year ago, and I worked on it for 18 months. And I'm not here to sell copies of this book, not at all. But this book is everything that I, it's the way I work on logos. It's right here, um, front to back, not in any particular order. It's all in this thing. So that said, I'm going to use the material from the book to illustrate my points. And um, I'm going to point out a certain audience member. I don't mean to humiliate him. Hey, Richard. Come see me afterwards. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> um, where was I? So this book, it's a visual incarnation about how I begin, how I develop, and how I present logos. And it's going to start like this. Here's a quick list of everything we're going to go through, just three major topics. Beginning a logo project, that's a real important one. And then we're going to talk about searching for specifics. So we get ideas going. And then how do we narrow them down? How do we consider options? How does that work? What does it look like? And then a little bit on preparing for presentation. And I say a little bit because um, we got an hour and 15 minutes, and I kind of weighted this thing heavier toward the development part of logo design and less towards exactly how you present them. So I'll, excuse me, I'll find out how much time I have left at the things, to, and that'll determine how much I put into that part of the presentation. Um, beginning with the beginning. This will involve learning about, um, we're going to talk about learning about a client, their product and services, their tastes, their rivals, their target audience, and we're also going to be talking about brainstorming with word lists and thumbnail sketches. Beginning a lo logo project. Okay, here we go. Designers are often tempted to, to sell this part short. Um, I like to get on my com computer and start playing with shapes and pictures and typefaces. And I feel like I have to rein myself back. It's like, not so fast, mister. We have to do some of the groundwork before we get going on this thing. So I'm going to talk about this part and um, all of its uh, aspects. And um, I 
I can't emphasize the, enough of the importance of some quality time at this part of your project. I'm not sure how it works for you in, in terms of learning, for the, learning about your client goes. I'm a freelancer. Learning about the client means driving to their office or inviting them to my office or meeting them at Starbucks and finding out information. You might work in-house or in an agency and you may never meet the client. I'm not sure how it works. In the agency I used to work for, I would meet with the account executive, they would meet with the client, so everything was kind of relayed like that. So translate everything I'm saying into whatever uh, working situation you have. When I say meet with the client, maybe it means meet with your art director or your account executive. But you'll know what I mean. Just know that I'm not forgetting about you and that, and that not everyone gets to meet with clients directly. The important thing is, of course, you've got to learn what you can about their product or services. Few of us are an expert in everything. So if your client is a trucking company, uh, I don't know anything about trucking or trucks or, or delivery systems, I would need to learn about that thing, obviously. This becomes the ammunition for your ideas later on, and we'll get into to more specifics about what you're learning about these things, but just a reminder, it's kind of like, duh, but take the time to go and find out what your client does, how they do it, learn a bunch about it. Um, learn to talk their language, so next time you show up for a meeting, you feel like, hey, I'm one of the group, and they'll be impressed that you're using their language and you know things about their business. They want to see that. <clears throat> 